broke last year that we've had since the 1990s. Since the 1990s. Uh, that's great news as we go forward, but we're not done yet. There's plenty more to be done. W one of my goals in the future is every year we're in office, I'm going to reduce the tax burden on you, the hardworking taxpayers in this state. So far, we've done it three years in a row, some $2 billion worth of tax relief. It's a nice contrast to the, the folks down in Illinois who just this last week, the, the governor there announced that the 67% increase they had in income taxes uh, three years ago is now permanent. I don't know about you, but m my advice to someone running for office is don't announce that a temporary income tax is going to be permanent two weeks before tax day in the year you're running for re-election. Uh, probably not a good strategy, but that's exactly what they're doing. In Minnesota last year, they raised taxes on employers and individuals, some $2 billion. Here in the last three years, we've lowered the tax bill burden by, by literally $2 billion. Now, sometimes in Madison, people don't understand that. Uh, they'll say, oh, no, you need to keep that money here. I don't know about this crowd, but as I go around the state, i got to tell you, I have yet to find people outside of our state's capital who say to me, Scott, we don't send enough of our money to Madison. <laughs> Nobody says that to me. Nobody says, you know what, my taxes, well, they're just really too low. I don't hear that at all. I don't even hear people say, you know, my taxes are just about right. What I hear time and time and time and time and time again is that if you want to continue the economic recovery that got us to the place where we had a surplus in the first place, put that money in the hands of the taxpayers so that as consumers and employers, you can put that money to work. It, it's, it's a simple concept. Sometimes they don't get it in Madison. They definitely don't get it in Washington. I, I call it the, it's a simple concept. I, I tell a story about, Tonette and I have been married 21 years last uh, February, 21 years on February 6th of this year. Uh, we've been married for more than two decades, and about two decades ago, not long after I was first married, uh, I made one of my first major mistakes. I went to Kohl's department stores, and I bought something at the price it was marked at. <laughs> Tonette said to me, you cannot go back to Kohl's until you learn how to shop there. So I figured out, now if I'm going to go out and I'm going to get a new Packers shirt or Badger shirt or Brewer shirt, I'm going to go to that rack in the front that says it was $29.99 and now it's $19.99. And then I'm going to say, well, wait, that's not enough. I'm going to get my Kohl's credit card out and I'm going to get another 30 or 25 or 15% off. And then if I'm paying attention to the insert in the Sunday paper, I'm going to take the little scratch off thing. And then if I was watching the mail, because Tonette buys a lot of stuff from Kohl's, there's probably one of those things that peels off that tells me I get another 30% off the top of that. And then because we just shopped there a couple weeks ago, we probably have some Kohl's cash left over. And so by the time it's done, they're almost paying me to buy it, right? Because <laughs> in Wisconsin, it's amazing what, we will, what we'll buy if we think we're getting a good deal for it, right? So how does Kohl's or companies, others like that, make money? Volume. They make it off of volume. Whether it's Kohl's or Shopco or anybody else out there, any great retailer out there understands that you can make a lot per product or you can reduce the cost of the product and sell a whole lot more in volume. I call it the Kohl's curve just because I, Kohl's is just down the block, not too far from where we raised our kids in Wauwatosa, but it could be any number of other retailers out there. I call it the Kohl's curve because it's a simple concept. You can make a lot per product and sell a few products or you can reduce the cost of the product and sell a whole lot more in added volume. To me, that's the principle of what we're trying to do with your tax dollars. We can tax you at higher rates, but fewer, fewer people, fewer employers will be making, making investments and making resources and hiring people. That we can lower the rates so that as individual consumers and as employers, you can have more of that money, particularly as employers, to invest in capital, to new equipment, to new technology, to new innovations, to things that help put people to work. And in turn, that will help more people work in this state and have a higher quality of life. People ask, why did we have such a big goal when it came to jobs and, and new businesses in this state? I said, well, because as I traveled the state when I applied to be your governor, it's pretty simple. When I saw the faces of the 130-some thousand people who had lost work in the four years before I took office, those weren't just numbers. Those weren't just statistics. They're not just a jobs report each month. Those were real people with real families. And I set out at that point to have a big, bold, ambitious goal so that we could have more families, not just more people, more people working so that more families in this state could go to bed at night not having to worry so hard about how to pay the mortgage at the end of the month or how to put food on the table for their kids or clothes on the backs of their kids 
That's what it's really all about. The good news is we're heading the right direction. Now, we're not done. There's still plenty more work to be done. That's why I was so thrilled to be, to be asked and to be able to join you here today because not only across the state but here in Door County, you know, the last few years we've gone through some challenges. It's not just overall. I mean, we made some big improvements in manufacturing. One of the best things specifically you all can tell manufacturers you're appealing to is not only has the overall tax rates gone down, but for manufacturing and for agriculture in this state, two of our biggest industries, two important industries here in Door County and northeastern Wisconsin. It escalates starting last year through 2016, but we have what's called the Manufacturing and Agricultural Production Tax Credit, which means by 2016, we effectively wiped out almost all of your taxable liability. That's a pretty big incentive. If you're saying, we want, we want you to grow here, we want a company that's here to grow, and we want to attract a new manufacturer, a new farming-related, agriculture-related industry into Door County, that's a pretty huge incentive. That's a significant incentive out there. And why? Because we understand that ultimately we're gaining off of the people who are going to be employed because of that. Because every time I go through a factory, I'm a little geeky this way, but I'll sometimes ask, how much does that cost? Because I see a lot of times in Madison, even more in our nation's capital, there's a lot of politicians out there who just think that you create jobs by magically announcing it. You create jobs when you invest in capital. A new piece of equipment might require two or three people to work it, depending on the shift. A lot of times that equipment may cost a couple hundred thousand dollars or more. We free that money up for employers to put that right back into that equipment, that new innovation, that new technology. That in turn will help us grow the economy, particularly true for, for small and mid-sized manufacturing. On top of that, we also understand though that, that as much as we can help businesses create the opportunity to do that, you've got to have the people to fill those positions. So I'm pretty frugal. My wife sometimes says I'm cheap, but I'm pretty frugal both at home and, in, and, and when it comes to your money in government. But one of the areas where I'm not afraid to spend some real dollars is worker training, career development. We understand that for, for manufacturing, for agriculture, for other key industries in the state, one of our biggest challenges going forward, you know, a few years ago it was not having enough jobs for people looking for work. Now it's getting to be where it's starting to be the reverse, where we don't have enough skilled employees to fill the jobs that are open and even more of those that will be open in the future. So we put $100 million last year into worker training, $100 million more in the state budget in our technical colleges and our K-12 schools and our UW system and beyond to make sure that we were equipped to fill those positions in advanced manufacturing, in information technology, in agriculture, in healthcare, and other key industries that are desperately looking to fill positions. We just added a few weeks ago another $35 million on top of that, not only to buy down the wait list so that Northeastern Wisconsin Technical College and all the other campuses across the state shouldn't have to have a wait list for any of those high need, high demand positions. But on top of that, we put more money to help invest even more, not only in our tech colleges, but into our high schools to, to make that connection so that we're not only making sure that all the spots that are, that are open are filled, but we're putting, we're encouraging more young people to go into those those key positions, not just for a job, but for a career. To understand that manufacturing jobs in particular are paying a whole lot more than the average, 20 to 25 percent more than the average job in the state, much more likely to have benefits, about double the retention rate. And those are one of the things where I would actually ask all of you as well to help with that because one of the challenges sometimes we have isn't with our students, it's with those of us as parents and people in our community. I said this in our State of the State address, but I'll repeat it again here. We need to be as proud of our sons and daughters who choose to be high-skilled welders and machinists and fabricators as we those choose as those of our sons and daughters who choose to be doctors and lawyers because each of those positions are vitally needed in our economy today, and they're really important to the future of the state's economy. But that changes the mindset. We've got to have a, a whole difference of opinion. Now, it's one of those where both my kids are in college, but I remember years ago, when they were preparing to go to high school, my, my son Matthew, who's now a sophomore, looked at two different schools, Marquette University High School, a private Catholic high school, and Wauwatosa East High School, which is where he ultimately went. But he, he got into Marquette High, he looked at both schools, he spent a lot of time on it. For a variety of reasons, Wauwatosa East was the right school for him. But I remember both schools we treated like we were applying to get into both. And so we looked at all the information, looked at the data. One of the things that to this day still, still sticks in my mind is both schools have brochures, and they're on their website too, that tell you how many kids have gone on to two, or excuse me, how many year, kids have gone on to four-year colleges or universities. We need to encourage our school districts all across the state 
to change that. It should be how many of our young people, how many of our young men and women in schools go on to a two or four year college or university? Because today there are increasingly more and more careers that don't require a four year degree, but require more than a high school uh, diploma. And so we need to make sure, that, like I said, that we put just as much of a focus on our two year technical college degree programs as we do in our four year colleges and universities, whether it's in UW or any of our private colleges and universities in the state as well. And so we're focused on lowering the cost of doing business by lowering the tax burden, the cost of complying with regulations and litigation in this state. At the same time, we're trying to do more in our technical colleges, in our UW system, in our high schools to make sure that we prepare more people to fill the jobs, not just of today, but increasingly in the next few years. Because one of the other things, just as an aside, some of your own businesses are probably starting to see this, but the, the recession kind of masked this. But we've got a huge wave of retirements approaching. You know, the baby boom generation has is, is already started to fully move into the retirement age cycle. And so for some of our, our great companies in the state, some of our major employers, you know, some of our best employees are at or near retirement. And that's been a little bit masked by the fact that across the country, the recession caused many people to delay their retirement because the 401k wasn't where it was supposed to be at and other things like that. But in the next five to 10 years, we're going to have this huge Ran out of time, right? <laughs> That's my cue, right? Wrap it up, Scott. So we're going to have this huge gap out there. And so we have, it's both a challenge and an opportunity. The opportunity is, particularly in places that have had high unemployment rates in the past, if we can key in on this issue, if we can really aggressively be out front in worker training and career development and plug that in, it not only becomes a workforce development issue, it becomes an economic development issue because employers are gonna to wanna to invest and grow in places where they know they've got the essentials. And the essentials are things like a steady supply, well-trained, well-prepared, hardworking employees, cost-effective and reliable sources of power, and a strong infrastructure system when it comes to transportation. Those are the foundations we're building here in Wisconsin on top of the fact that we're lowering the cost of doing business in this state. We're excited about where we're headed, but we're not done yet. And with your help, we're gonna to continue to make it even better here in the great state of Wisconsin. So with that, we've got a few minutes yet. We'll take some questions before the mic goes out again and I'm really done. <laughs> sure, way back there. Sorry, I picked the furthest off with the mic there. You can shout it out. I'll repeat it if I can hear it too, if you want. for him to get the information he needed through the school system to be able to pursue that role. He didn't want us involved. He did it all himself. He's all enrolled. He's ready to go. What is your, now looking at the past, he's my last kid, but there's a lot of people here who still have kids. What exactly are, is the government thinking about doing to encourage, like the school system is still today, to push people in that position? No, that's a great question. The, um, and a couple of us were talking about this earlier. We just, just in the past year, so just as this has been happening, uh, late last year I signed new legislation, the legislature helped us out with, uh, that puts uh, up to $1,000 per student incentive for schools to do more career uh, and technical education. The idea of getting it not only to encourage young people like your son to go on to places like uh, Northeastern Wisconsin Technical College or others, but to even start doing it more in, in the school itself early on. We did that last fall. The measure I just passed about, or signed into law about three weeks ago, puts 35.4 million in, most of which goes into our technical colleges to draw it on the wait list, but, but another major portion of that will literally go into what we call dual enrollment. What that really just means is trying to put more dollars in to encourage school districts, either individually with the tech college, or in many cases, a number of school districts combining together to do programs within the high school experience that get young people interested early on where they can get what well, they call it dual enrollment where they get credit both for high school graduation and in many cases by having a technical college instructor involved they'll also get credit 
for their degree in their technical college. The idea is you get them in sooner. And a lot of the places I've already toured, we've already started doing some of this. Um, I talk to parents who say, this is unbelievable. My son or daughter, great young man, great young woman, um, but really hadn't found their niche. Boy, this is exactly what they're great at. They're zooming away. And what I tell even a lot of my son's friends over the last couple of years is, if you want a career that requires a four-year degree, God bless you, that's wonderful. Uh, but increasingly, uh, young people need to look at the fact that they shouldn't just be pushed into a four-year degree uh, because many of the careers that require a two-year technical college degree, like welding, high-skilled welding, will probably make ten to $15,000 more than their classmates who are not going to be out of school for two to three years after their classmate at a technical college. They're going to have a fraction of the student loan debt, uh, and they're going to be working sooner and making more. Um, so it's a pretty compelling argument out there, and it's one where, again, from the corporation standpoint, I tell you, the, the big thing is it's not only an important – I mean – a lot of times we compartmentalize these issues. We say that's just an education thing. It's not just an education thing. It directly ties into your ability. If you want to attract more growth in just about any industry, but particularly in manufacturing, one of the key things that manufacturers are looking at right now is, if I'm going to grow here, am I going to have enough welders? Am I going to have enough machinists and CNC operators, uh, other key positions, tool and die? And, and if you want to be able to make a convincing case, they might say, you know, it's great. You can add all the incentives in the world, but if those things aren't there, they're going to think twice about whether or not they come or not. And so I, I harp on it. I become an evangelist on this. I just firmly believe it, that that, that you got to have everything else. I'm not saying that alone will do it, but, but I think that's just so important. we got to make sure we don't think about just K through 12 or just technical college or just UW. All those things piece together. Everything should fit into that, that whole theme of how do we make it easier to create jobs and opportunity in this state. And if we think about it in those terms, we're going to see all those pieces fit together. Time for one more, or is that the cue? That's it. Give me the cue. <laughs> all right. Uh, we would also like to make a presentation to you. And Good. here is uh, Ms. Door County, Cora Baldwin. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Cora Baldwin, Miss Star County 2014, and I was crowned back in February, and I will be competing at Miss Wisconsin in the, um, this coming June. Uh, we would just like to thank Governor Walker for taking time out of his busy schedule today. So on behalf of the Economic Development Corp and all of our businesses here in Door County, we would like to present you with a basket from um, our local businesses. So thank you. Um, the governor has to make his next appointment, so we want to thank you for a fine speech and for coming to Door County. I would like to introduce uh, our executive director, the one and only executive director of the Door County Economic Development Corporation for his annual report, Bill Shador. Thank you, Dave. Can you hear me all? First of all, um, I'm so proud of our board of directors. We have a phenomenal board of directors, and uh, it's exemplified by our chairman, uh, Dave Ward. I think I'm the envy of the state of Wisconsin in this business for having the economic development guru as the chairman of our board of directors. So give him and our board another round of applause, please. <laughs> I also want to start off by apologizing for those of you who are positioned on the edge of our room and the fact that you may have some challenges seeing some of the slides and the videos that we're going to show today. Um, it's just the price of having such a phenomenal turnout. Um, we're going to do the best we can. If you need to stand up and sneak around uh, to be able to see better, um, have at it. Um, 
we again apologize that um, we had to have some, uh, obser um, you know, not the best seating. So um, again, uh, just got a few minutes here. We have a lot to get through yet today. Um, I just wanted to spend.